Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to find a coolant leak on a car, the best way. And then I'm going to show you the five most likely coolant leaks on a car. So there's no getting away from the fact that the best way of finding a coolant leak on a car is using a pressure tester. So the first thing I did is undo the engine under tray and remove that. Before I do anything else, I'm going to throw some clean cardboard underneath the car. This stuff's really good because when we pressure test the engine cooling system in a minute, wherever the leak is, it'll start dripping down onto here and we'll be able to work out where it's coming from. So here I've got a coolant pressure testing kit and as you can see it has lots and lots of different adapters in it. And so the first thing you need to do is undo your coolant tank cap. Be careful if it's hot. If you've recently been driving the car and it's really hot then it's recommended that you wait at least 30 minutes before undoing this cap. And then even when you do just do it nice and slow. And the reason is this system becomes pressurized with up to 10 to 15 PSI. And uh, as you undo that cap, then hot water can come out and scold you. And please take this warning seriously because you really can get a bad burn from the steam. So the next thing to say is you have to do this test when you've got plenty of fluid in the system. So if you've lost a lot of coolant, then you'll need to top this up with some coolant or with some water. And if you're unsure what coolant is in your car or what coolant it should take, then this Prestone is a really good option because it's compatible with all coolants. Mine's about half full, so we're good to go. So now we need to find an adapter that's going to fit onto that coolant tank. And what we're looking for is something that looks similar to what the underneath of the cap looks. So I've just had a bit of a scan through them, and I think that one looks pretty similar. So I'm going to give it a try. Ah yeah, that's feeling good. So I just need to get that on there nice and tight. And if your car's got a radiator with a cap on it, you can find a kit that has one of these adapters as well, so you can still do the coolant pressure test. Okay, so before we go any further, we need to know how much pressure to pump this up to, because if we overdo it, we can actually cause a problem in the system. And a lot of the time, it'll say on the cap somewhere what the pressure rating is for the system. And on this BMW, it doesn't, but the rule of thumb is that it's normally 10 to 15 PSI. So next up, I'm just going to get the uh, pump part out of the kit. And then this literally just clips onto that. It's got a little uh, quick release connection. Now, if you're not sure if you have a leak on your system or not, make sure you know exactly where your coolant level is. Because once you pump this up, if there is a leak, it'll start leaking. And of course, you can look underneath. But it's really helpful if you know where your level was. Because if you see that level drop, then of course, it means you have a leak on the system somewhere. So I'm just going to go ahead and pump this up. And you do, it's only a little pump, so you do have to go a bit. So as you can see, I got mine somewhere between 10 and 15 PSI. The pressure does drop a little bit on my tester because I think somewhere in the system, the air leaks out a little bit. But while it's pressurized, we can jump underneath the car and see if we see any water landing on that cardboard and that would give you an idea where above you it's coming from. Okay, so that's how to use a coolant pressure tester to find a coolant leak on your car. But stick around because up next I'm gonna show you the five most common coolant leak areas. So where do most coolant leaks come from? Well, it's probably no surprise to you that the most common cause of coolant leaks are coolant hoses and connections themselves. Okay, so let's have a look. Now, first up, are the heater hoses which do your heating inside the car. Now they go down the back of the engine and then they go through into the cabin. Now the heater hoses are hard to show you because they're always tucked down the back where it's hard to reach and even harder to see. But don't worry, I've got a solution. So this is an empty engine bay and I, I took the engine out specifically so I could show you this. Okay, well, I didn't really, but it sounded good, right? And if we zoom into the back, I'll be able to show you the heater hoses. So just here you can see where they go up into the car. They're unlikely to be a problem because they're often hidden behind some trim, which means they don't get exposed to the elements. But here where they come out and they're running behind the engine, this is where you can get problems with some of the joints. Now these will be hard to see behind your engine, but if you look down with a torch from the top, and also if you have the car jacked up and you can get underneath, you'll notice drips coming down quite far back on the cardboard at the back of the engine. That'll be your best clue that one of these might be your problem. I have fixed these before with the engine in situation, but it is awkward, I'll be honest. Now this here is a typical fitting that you might see on a modern coolant system on a car. Usually there's some wire around the outside edge, which makes them clip 
and helps retain it. Well, in there is an O-ring. Those O-rings can become flat or brittle over time. And it is possible to pick those out if you do it carefully and then use our O-ring kit to replace them. If you ever notice a water leak into the passenger footwell of your car, then there's a good chance it's the heater matrix that's providing your heating inside the car because it's almost like a mini radiator. Usually it'll sit down here, you know, behind the glove box and the hot water from the engine runs through it. So if it develops a leak, guess where the water goes? We're back to our old friend, the expansion tank. Now this is a very common coolant leak location. Now there's this top one that's easy to get to and really this is just kind of like an overflow that returns back to the tank. But there's another bigger one that goes underneath and that one comes out the bottom of the tank and it feeds and tops up the coolant system if it ever starts to run low. And you can just see it underneath the coolant tank there. And next up, coolant leaks from radiator hoses. Now these are the big hoses which go onto the back of your radiator itself. Often you can see these by either looking through the grill low down on the car or from underneath with the car jacked up. But I've got a radiator pack out at the moment, so I'm going to show you on that as a prop. So it used to be that you just had a radiator on the front of a car. Nowadays you have a rad pack. And sometimes it can take a little bit of working out which one is the actual radiator. If you've got a small one like this and you've got a turbo car, then it's likely to be an intercooler. Or some people call it a charge cooler because it cools the intake going into the car. And if you've got a couple of small slim ones with quite small ports going into them, then it's likely one will be an air con condenser and the other one will probably be an oil cooler, either for the transmission or cooling oil for the engine. And then that leaves the biggest one, which will normally be the thickest. And it will usually run full length or at least three quarter length. So it will be the biggest radiator in the rad pack and that's the coolant radiator. You can't see it from this side, so I'm just going to spin it around for you. So these big ports and big pipes are for the intercooler. Air goes through them. The bit that we're looking at is this bigger radiator here. And as you can see, they often have much smaller ports. So if we're sticking with coolant hose leaks, then this is the area that we're looking at, this port here, and another one at the far side. Because this is where your coolant hoses clip onto the radiator. And potentially one of these coolant connections could be leaking. Again, the O-rings inside the fittings might be the culprits. And usually there'll be two of these connections. There'll be one here, and then one at the other side of the radiator. So there's plenty of other coolant hoses on a car, but these are the main ones. But the key thing is keep your eye open and look for those drips coming down. But while we've got this radiator here, of course, the radiator is on the list of most common leak areas on a car coolant system. So let's have a closer look at it. So this is the way the rad pack fits into the car, meaning this is the bottom of the radiator here. And if you have a leaking radiator, for whatever reason, it's always these bottom corners. I don't know if it's fatigue from movement of the car or whether it's corrosion just because water gets down here in pools. But it's always a good idea to check these bottom corners. And of course, if there is a leak on it, the water is going to run down and it'll start dripping off the bottom. Also, it makes sense to inspect the cores. All of these little channels that you see, they all carry water. So if there's damage anywhere in here, something's hit it, etc., then that could be a cause of your leak. And then the next one are the end caps. Can you see how these are like crimped on and then the end caps are plastic? Well, this plastic can stress and crack over time. And so sometimes you might see a leak on an end cap. If we turn the rad pack back round again, you can see the coolant radiator, which is at the back is protected by layers of other items that I mentioned earlier, the intercooler and the AC condenser. But this isn't the case on all cars. Sometimes the coolant radiator is exposed with nothing else in the way. And that means that stones and pebbles and other debris from the road can sometimes get kicked up and just come in the front and damage your radiator. So if you can see any of your coolant radiator from the front, then it's always worth inspecting the front side for damage as well. So next up is a coolant leak from the expansion tank cap. Now, when you're doing a pressure test, you remove this cap and then you put the adapter in, which means if there's a problem with this, you'll never see it during the pressure test. Now you may be thinking, well, hang on a sec, the coolant levels down here and the tanks at the top. So how does it leak? Well, when the system's pressurized, then it can actually force water up near the cap. And also water can escape if there's a bad seal by way of steam. 
So it's actually steam coming out of there, but that can soon drain your coolant system. So let's get this cap off and I'll show you what to look for. So the main culprit on this type of expansion cap are the two seals that are on this center part. And these can get flattened after a while. And the way to resolve this is to put new O-rings on. You can buy an O-ring kit like this and I'll link to a few in the description and then just replace it with the correct size. Or you can go to the dealership for your make of car. Now on some types of expansion tanks, there aren't O-rings on the center part. There's a seal around this inner edge that sits down in the groove. And what can happen is that can get brittle and it can get cracked and broken over time. So that's what you'd need to look for there. Anyway, ours is looking okay, so I'm gonna pop it back. Now when you're putting it back on, make sure it's good and tight. And some manufacturers put little arrows on and they show you when it's fully closed. Because you guessed it, if that cap's not on fully or tight or it's cross-threaded, then that can lead to a coolant leak. Okay, so while we're working in the area, next up is a coolant leak from the expansion tank itself. What can happen is these coolant tanks get old, basically. You know, they get brittle, they're subjected to a lot of heat, and so they can crack and start to leak. Look especially for anywhere that's got a seal. So you can see this tank was probably made in two halves and then plastic welded or formed together. This is a key area all around where you might get a leak. Also, these coolant tanks often have a coolant sensor on them somewhere. Sometimes it's in the cap, but more often they'll be in the side or underneath. So really what you'll need to do is loosen off the expansion tank and then lift it up at least a little bit so that you can look underneath and inspect. Again, this is something best done when your coolant isn't hot. Because if this is pressurized and maybe it does have a crack on it, it could suddenly let go and you could get burned. So the final one on our list for most likely places for a coolant leak is a coolant leak from a water pump. Now on a modern car, these can be really hard to find because there's so much packed into engine bays these days, it can be hard to see down into there. But the rule of thumb is wherever you can see the pulleys and belts, that's where you'll find the water pumps. So this is a longitudinally mounted engine and I can see all the pulleys just down here by looking. The other common way that engines are mounted are what we call trans-mounted engines, where all the pulleys will be right up against the left-hand side along the inner wing. Very similar to what I said earlier, you can get access to look down there, but you might find you have to take a few things out of the way, the intake hose or the under tray so you can look up from the underneath. But luckily for you guys, I've got a spare engine out on an engine stand right now, so I'll be able to show you quick and easy what we're looking at. So on this car, and to be honest, it's not too unique. A lot of cars will still have this pulley system. So this is the crank, this is the aircon condenser, the alternator. This is a little tensioner pulley. And then finally, this is the water pump. So typically you'll find the water pump in this sort of location. And you guessed it, a water pump is often a very common coolant leak location on a car. So this is the main drive pulley which goes back into the water pump and turns it. And as the engine's running and the belt's going round, then that makes your coolant pump pump the coolant around your engine. So two things can go wrong with this. The first one is because this shaft goes into the water pump and drives an impeller, then that means that there's a seal on the shaft. And if that seal starts to wear, which does happen after a while, sometimes 50 or 60,000 miles as early as that, then you'll start to see coolant leaking down the front of the engine. And the other thing that can happen, there's a series of bolts around the outer edge of this water pump and that's what holds it onto the engine. And behind the flange that you can just see back here, there'll be a gasket and that's what seals it and stops it from leaking. Well, that can deteriorate after a while. And then when that happens again, water runs down and it drips out the bottom and down the front of the engine. And to be honest, if you have either of these problems with your water pump, either the water pump seal itself or the gasket that holds it on, then you're best just replacing the water pump itself and it'll come with a new gasket because it's such a big job to get down into this area and access it that there's no point just putting a new gasket on because your pump might fail soon after. So while we're in this area talking about the water pump, which is round here, there'll often be a thermostat in the area and on older engines, it'll be mounted somewhere near the water pump. You'll see the hoses from the water pump going into it and it'll be mounted to the front of the engine. But on a lot of modern engines, you'll have this thing, which is called a heat management module. And as you can see, there's lots of coolant pipes that come into it. There'll be lots of actuators in here because there's a lot of electronics that go to it. 
Every one of these connections and connectors are a possible source for a leak. So on this particular engine, if you saw a leak coming down the side of the engine, landing on that cardboard underneath this area, then this might be a good area to check. You may need to get the engine cover off the top of the engine in order to be able to see this. By the way, if you're wondering why the heck I've got an engine out and partially stripped down, it's because I also do car project series. And this is a water flood damaged car where I've got the engine out and I'm seeing if I can repair it. So if that's the sort of thing that interests you, I'll put a link in the video description and maybe you can check it out. Okay, so let's get back out there and finish looking at these coolant leaks and I can wrap this up. Before I finish, I'm going to throw in one more bonus piece of information for you. I didn't mention it in my list of the five most common coolant leaks because I think it is less likely, but it will be remiss of me not to at least mention it now. And this final thing is, there's a chance that you might have a head gasket leak. And if you do have a head gasket leak, then it means coolant may be getting into your combustion chambers and then consumed and going out of your exhaust. And that would deplete your coolant level over time. Now I have done a really good video showing you how to do a chemical test of the coolant that's in your expansion tank. But you do have to follow the instructions closely to make sure you get the results that you're looking for. And I'll provide a link to that video in this video description and also at the end of this video. Okay, so that's how to find a coolant leak using a pressure tester and five of the most likely places for a coolant leak. Hopefully you liked the video and if you did, then please give me a thumbs up. And if I missed something or you've got a question, then please drop me a comment. And finally, if you want to see more videos just like this one on car DIY, then please consider subscribing. And if you're still watching now at the very end, then thanks for watching. It's much appreciated. Bye for now.